Swing in London town Where the mobs and rockers chase There's a certain charm that makes my heart race With their bold style and flirty gates Thick British girls lead me in a day Hello, everybody. My name is Ikel O'Hara, and this is the Future Fiction Factory. Check to see if uh, this was actually working. I do have a mid journey thing up there. What is that? Welcome. Oh, I see. Welcome. My name is Ikel O'Hara, and this is the Future Fiction Factory. Never raise and, bitch. Uh, uh, let me. I didn't realize I had it up so loud. <laughs> I was trying to talk over it. All right. Um, that was Sunno. And. I'm just the all right, welcome to the factory. Welcome to, well, you know, the place where we do things. I am thinking I'm going to have to get myself a new chair <laughs> because it's not only loud, but sometimes when I'm sitting in it, it just goes clunk, clunk. Uh, it just drives me a little crazy. All right, so what are we doing today? Today at the Future Fiction Factory, we are... Actually, I just realized I didn't get any water. <laughs> I'll have to go off of here for a split second while I maybe show you the video. You know what? There is a video of the new, oh gosh, what is it called? OpenAI has a new robot <laughs> and it was it's uh let me see here uh you youtube and i will go and find matt wolf there we go matt wolf and his ai news which will start up now theoretically the man there we go and then i will look <laughs> i'm looking for uh, a specific thing, um, open AI, no, was it, there, that's the thing, figure, figure one robot, all right, I bet it's on X, um, or Twitter, as it were, and I will show you all that while I go run, 
be here. Oh, that's wrong. And I've got my thing in all caps, figure one. Figure one. Robot. Yeah, status update. Yep, this is the one. This is the one. All right, I'm going to take it off of mute. And then I'm going to rewind it. And then I'm going to switch y'all to it. As soon as it starts playing. If it starts playing, <laughs> come on, it may not, why would not, okay, let's try, let's try this one and uh, we'll do it without music and I will play, you know what, I will play my own music. Um, something, we'll do dance. In the heart of the city where the lights are ablaze, there's a place that's allowing for sound of days. It's a rhythmic kind of Straight. Let's get this music. What they need is a volume control on this site. My gosh, this is so loud. <laughs> it's what they need. All right, let's see here. Uh -huh. Where are you? Okay. All right. So uh, that was the figure one robot, and I to to drop something to drop OpenAI's. Uh, um, intelligence into an actual robot is well that's pretty amazing Nicholas how are you today welcome to the show good morning good morning good morning <laughs> all right let's see here live there we go I'm happy to see you happy to see you here okay and um Let's see, let's go back to our news. So that was the figure one robot. And uh, I just think it's cool because I'm a technologist and a futurist and all of that stuff. And uh, But our first story of the day, <laughs> y'all, our first story of the day is uh, OpenAI's uh, GPT-4 was leaked online. All right. They, it was actually leaked online. OpenAI's GPT 4.5 Turbo leaked on search engines and could launch in June. It seems that GPT 4.5 has been leaked by the uh, by the OpenAI web team. 
The first search engines like Bing and DuckDuckGo index the GPT 4.5 Turbo product page before an official announcement. However, the indexed link for GPT 4.5 Turbo leads to a 404 page, but there is some teaser text visible in the search engine that says GPT 4.5 Turbo is open AI's fastest and most accurate and most scalable model to date. <laughs> they kind of screwed that up, didn't they, y'all? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, sometimes, sometimes um, things get out of hand. Uh, when you are moving at the pace of Sam Altman, <laughs> I have a strange feeling that mistakes are going to happen, which is kind of a little bit scary because, you know, everybody's all scared about AI, but for all different kinds of reasons, too. And then I just, the things I just cannot fathom why they would be scared of AI, but I understand the uh, existential threat to each one of their s specific jobs. I just think that there's a possibility that we aren't going to have this issue. Not really that things will move on just like the internet was supposed to have like caused a whole bunch of disruption in America. Uh, it seems that there are more prosperous people than ever in America. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of arguments. There's a lot of people who are doomsayers, but then there's all these statistics that say things are getting better. I like math and statistics and what I consider to be actual reality. And those things to me are to be optimistic about the way that the world is going to move towards this technology. GPT 4.5 could literally change our lives, could change the way that we write, the way it could be able, which means that maybe... Maybe once they get to five, GPT-5, that we'll be able to fine-tune four in ways that we had never thought of. And the, I, the taste of the fine-tune uh, with 3.5 has been glorious, absolutely glorious. So to actually get an opportunity to move forward in models with GPT, uh, with uh, OpenAI, is a step in the right direction towards real writing bliss. If you were really, really excited about the future of being able to conjure things up with AI, your imagination, and your creativity, then this is probably a really welcome news story for you. Let's see what else they have to say. 4.5 with larger context window and up-to-date information. The context window, uh, which determines how many words the model can process simultaneously, is specified in the teaser text as 256, which is a quarter of Gemini 1.5 Pro. I have been playing around with Gemini 1.5 Pro in the million text window, and I've been quizzing it over and over and over again. And I am, I, I, as a matter of fact, I'm going to set up a actual video where I quiz Gemini in the, with the million text, a million context window, token context window. I quiz it, right? And then I take all of that information, uh, but before I quiz it, I'm going to write down all the answers and you will see the answers. And then we will see if it comes up with the same answers from the text. I've uh, it, this is starting to really excite me, y'all. <laughs> I am not gonna lie. I've got some actual things that I need to consolidate. I have some stuff I need to move on to Google Drive in order for this stuff to happen because I've been doing a lot of writing inside of Scrivener. So this is. A very, so I'm going to be playing around with that large context window, and this will be a primer for this twice as many context window of GPT-4 Turbo. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be over 128,000 um, K context. It's going to be nothing 
It's going to be at 256, which is a quarter of a million, which is a quarter of Gemini. And it hopefully will have better needle in a haystack recall than GPT-4 Turbo because uh, it just doesn't look at anything in the middle. And I like for it to look at stuff in the middle in order to uh, pull out information about a particular character. Did this character do that or what did, what happened with that? And it's storing all of the stuff in its memory dynamically because it's at a context of a million. So it sits there and it's like little back brain kind of ready to have any question asked of it. There's a lot of people who was who were taking PDFs and uh, asking questions of the PDFs in technical for technical reasons and coding and stuff like that. Uh, I like the idea of being able to take all of the stuff that I've written about my universe, all of these things, and putting it all into the same thing and saying, hey, is there anything in here that uh, contradicts the other thing, like one character that is supposedly one name being called another name or anything like that? Could I have a report? That right there is the driving force of my being to be able to report out all of those things that I've been working on when I was a young writer. And I could take those same things and move them forward and start really fleshing out things. And that's what I've been doing. I've been doing a lot of that. I'm hoping to publish something pretty soon. So um, let's see here. Let's get back to the story. Was there anything else besides that? Uh, likely unveiled... Uh, a likely date for the official unveiling is this coming Thursday, the anniversary of GPT-4. OpenAI Sam Altman has also signed up for Lex Friedman's podcast. There was a Friedman podcast with Altman after the release of GPT-4. Sorry, I didn't mean to just drink right in your ear. For... That, that is interesting. Uh, more important than the amount of input data, however, is how reliable the model process processes all that data. So it's supposedly better at doing that. Teaser description also indicates Turbo is up to date to June 2024, which means uh, that should be when it actually comes out because it isn't June. All right. And uh, that right there is really kind of <laughs> the testament to the how fast everything is moving train. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a testament to how fast everything is moving. It, they cannot stop at OpenAI. They have unleashed this thing and they've teased agents and agency and all of those things kind of make me giddy as a technologist but also I'm a little concerned on their implementation. If you think about GPT-3 uh, the what we've seen from the GPT store we have seen a kind of gravitation towards specific GPTs. Uh, people are not as enthusiastic about using the GPTs as I would have thought. I've been using things like the songwriter GPT and stuff like that to just try and get a feel for how far things can be tweaked, especially with working with Suno AI and creating songs. I've also uh, discovered that if I purchase a very expensive program called Ban in the Bo Ban in a Box. I will always have access to the ability to take the Suno songs and create actual like um, uh, fake sheets. I can make a fake book of all of my Suno songs and start like uh, shopping my charts around if I wanted to. Uh, I could uh, take those songs and tweak them a little bit and get them to sound a bit more like I want them to sound, uh, put my voice over them as singing, and then change my voice into whoever the artist is I'm pitching the song to, Ariana Grande, 
Drake, whatever is that that pop artist is. And I could just crank out different versions of what I think is a good song uh, could be until and for 10 bucks a month, I could create 500 songs and figure out the best of 500 songs. And I will I can guarantee you those 500 songs are like 10 percent of those 500 songs are going to be friggin bangers. <laughs> I don't understand why. But they're just so good. The next story, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about a weedy bitty itty bitty little seedy teedy weedy language model called Claude Three Haiku. <laughs> and Claude Three Haiku, our fastest model yet. This is straight from the Anthropic site. Today we are release we're releasing Claude 3 Haiku, the fastest and most affordable model in its intelligence class. With state of the art vision capabilities and strong performance on industry benchmarks, Haiku is a versatile solution for a wide range of enterprise applications. The model is now available alongside Sonnet and Opus in the Claude API and on Claude AI for our Claude Pro subscribers. And this gives you a overview of what the amount of money you be spending in comparison to uh, GPT 3.5 or Gemini 1.0 Turbo, uh, 1.0 Pro. Wow, I did not realize Gemini 1.0 Pro was so expensive. I'm not really worried about it. They gave us $300 uh, for like three, two, three months or something like that. So I've been burning through that. Like, I don't know what. Uh, I mean, not burning through it, but I did not realize that. And uh, it's got really pretty good grades. Uh, it's beating GPT 3.5 in every single benchmark. Some things, obviously, it wasn't testing on, but every single benchmark and 89 in knowledge and oh wow that's pretty good uh barely in common knowledge but that's pretty good sometimes i have been working with haiku and it has been working weird uh it does some weird little things uh, not everything but some weird little things speed is essential for our enterprise users who need to quickly analyze large data sets and, general, uh, and generate timely output for tasks like customer support. Claude 3 Haiku is three times faster than its peers for the vast majority of workloads, processing 21K tokens. That's 21,000 tokens, okay? 30 pages per second for prompts under 32K, uh, 32,000 tokens long. It also generates swift output, enabling responsive, engaging chat experiences and the execution of many small tasks in tandem. So it's doing a, it's doing its thing. And uh, is it going to have music? see claude three haiku for instant customer service ah it's giving examples of customer service sorry to hear that can we provide you with something headaches uh, i'm having headaches uh can i get once a month are your headaches right uh right or left eye it varies thanks for your additional information are your symptoms accompanied by headaches? Yes, headaches are very sensitive. That will be helpful for the doctor to know. Next, can you please list any medications that you're currently taking? I'm taking ibuprofen for my headaches and also medication for high blood pressure. Can you please tell me if there are more uh, blood pressure medications indication? Uh, and uh, include, and here, take this. And it looks at a picture. Looks like this is uh, something, something. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. We're nearly done. Can you, uh, do you have any allergies? 
Uh, I'm allergic to penicillin. Got it. Lastly, provide a brief medical history focusing on any relevant. My father suffers from migraines. Thanks for the information. <laughs> and there you go. It outputs seeds. Yeah. Oh, what did that just say? Output seeds are accurate at the time of recording, but may vary depending on your uh, how you access Claude. I get it. So if you're using the API, it might be different than using the actual chatbot. Because I have a feeling they have something underpinning something with the chatbot. Okay, and there you go. Healthcare. Looks like you can use it with healthcare. Haiku pricing... Uh, Haiku's pricing model with a one to five input to output token ratio. We are designed for enterprise workloads, which often involve longer prompts. Businesses can rely on Haiku to quickly analyze large volumes of documents, such as quarterly filing, stuff like that. Along Side its speed and, abort and affordability, Claude 3 provides enterprise-grade security and robustness. Okay, that's nice. Um, starting today, customers can use Claude 3 Haiku through our API. Or, and I'm going to click, right-click on that. Or with a Claude Pro subscription on Claude AI. Claude.ai. <laughs> Uh, you can, it's also uh, available in Amazon Bedrock and can also um, use it in Google Cloud Vortex AI, which I have a thing signed up. I'm signed up for that so I could drop it into there if I wanted to. And uh, the prompts containing footnotes. Prompts containing over 32,000 tokens may experience 30 to 60% slower ingestion speeds, which... We expect to improve in the coming weeks. Customers may also experience additional latency when processing images. All right, so let's play with that. We're going to get started over here. And I'm already logged in. <laughs> cool. Okay, so I'm going to go to the workbench. And as you can see over here, Haiku is now. Uh, Haiku is now available. It is third down. It is now available. I have done some testing with this, uh, but Elizabeth over at the Future Fiction Academy uh, is really she really delved in she went with all three of them and she said there was no noticeable difference there is some deep learning sort of stuff that when you're using opus if you want to do some really intricate writing if you want to actually use the writing for what it needs to you know what Let, let's do a i'm gonna do a I'm going to do a proper video about this right now. There we go. Okay. Listen to that. Listen to that chair. Oh, my God. My chair is dying. This is so annoying. All right. Sorry about that, y'all. God bless. Okay. Hope that the uh, quality of the video does not downgrade because I just hit the record button, but it should click in at some point and should be fine. Oh, you know what I haven't done? <laughs> let me do this even though I'm recording. Uh, and let me check in on my people. Miss Swift, good to see you. <laughs> it's so good to see you. Hey, hey, hey. hola, y'all. Hola, y'all. Uh, my volume is still a little, my volume's a little low. My volume is a little low. How about that? Is that better, Miss Swift? Or should I be like this? 
Is that better? Okay, good. Thank you. All right. Okay, let's see. All right. I'm going to move this away just a little bit and maybe move this over like that. Give it a quick little. Um, there we go. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. And we are recording. Okay. Hello, my name is Ikello Herod, and this is the Future Fiction Factory. Today, we are going to be playing around with Claude 3 Haiku. And we're going to be doing it inside of the Claude, inside of the Anthropic uh, Workbenchy sort of console, which is really a playground. Everybody else started calling it playgrounds a long time ago. Why can't they just join in on the, on the fun? All right, so let's jump right in. This right here is Claude 3, right? You can see that over in this upper left-hand corner, I've got access to all of my models. And if I click on this little drop-down menu, you can see right there I've got access to Claude 3 Haiku now. And it has, it looks like I have access to the temperature. I can take the temperature up to 1. And it uh, looks like our max tokens on that sucker is 4,000. I'm going to go ahead on and keep it at about 4,000. Because Well, no. I'm going to make it at about 2,000. And uh, we're going to write a story. And uh, luckily, it does have system prompts. So we're going to write a quick... No, actually, we're going to take a prompt from yesterday and uh, I'm gonna use one of my you're a helpful blah 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 prompt prompt uh, Claude 3 anthropic there we go there we go and the prompt I'm going to use today the prompt I'm using today is You are a helpful writing assistant. This is an, uh, this, uh, that is an expert in science fiction. You are the level of a New York editor for science, f science fiction. <laughs> I really need to change that. Science fiction. And, uh, you are insightful. And your job is to be is to help write and create mm, fictional narratives. Okay, and uh, we're gonna do a user prompt. And what shall the user prompt be? The user prompt is going to be. Um, um, I'm gonna get it primed up and say, "Let's uh, create a story." And I'm going to start my dictation up so that we can uh, get a uh, stream of consciousness flow going. And I suggest, I suggest that you use dictation for your prompting. The flow of your consciousness makes, unlocks your ability to uh, talk to the AI like the AI wants to be talked to. Just have a conversation with it. See if it works, I promise you you will have a lot more like latitude when it comes to your prompting. Your prompting will get better. Use your voice. It will, in turn, use your mind. So now we are back in the system prompt. I mean, we're back in the user prompt, and I have dictation turned on, and we're going to create something on the fly. All right. The uh, And like I said, I like I've always said I I uh, pride myself in my imagination and I feel like if you have a fertile imagination then you should just flow with the creating create with the flow 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, create something. I'm going to a musician finds a guitar that transports him to the era for which he's playing, period. He is a virtuoso, so he knows everything from the mandolin all the way forward to the most futuristic guitars. Period. This means he can go all the way back to Mozart's time and all the way deep into the future just by imagining what a futuristic guitar would be like. Period. Help me with the outline, please. Period. I need a beginning, a middle, and an end, and I want you to be creative. And we are going to zoom out. And we're going to hit run up in the upper right hand corner right over my head here uh, right where my head would be and there you go and now that that is written we can go over here and take a look and see what happened Certainly, there's a creative outline for your story. Uh, here's a creative outline for your story. Beginning. Introduce the protagonist, a talented musician who is well-versed in the history and evolution of musical instruments, from the mandolin to the most futuristic guitars. Set the scene where the musician stumbles upon an old, unassuming guitar in a thrift shop or antique store, uh, antique store. As the musician starts to play the guitar, he notices something strange. The music he's playing seems to be transporting him through time rather than just filling the room. The middle. The musician experiments with the guitar, playing different styles and genres, and finds that he can travel to different eras of history with the time from the time of Mozart to the distant future. In each period, the musician encounters unique musical challenges and opportunities showcasing his virtuosity and, uh, and ability. He may meet historical figure. He, uh, he may meet historical figures, collaborate with other musicians or even influence the development of music and instruments in these different eras. The musician begins to realize the power and responsibility that comes with this time-traveling guitar, as his actions could have unintended consequences on the timeline. The musician faces a dilemma. Should he continue to use the guitar to, ex to explore different musical eras, or should he try to find a way to return to his own time and preserve the natural flow of history? In a climactic moment, the musician must make a choice that could have lasting implications either for himself or for the future of music. The story could end with the musician finding a way to harness the guitar's power for the greater good, or with him making the difficult decision to leave the guitar behind and return to his own time forever, changed by his extraordinary experiences. Throughout the story, you could, you can weave in themes of power of music, the importance of preserving cultural heritage and the responsibility that comes with wielding extraordinary abilities. The time-traveling guitar can serve as a metaphor 
for the musician's own journey of self-discovery and the evolution of music over time. So that right there is a pretty doggone good rendition. Let's uh, put in my head there. There we go. A pretty good doggone rendition of a very quick, fast thought about a story that I could possibly write one day. Something beautiful and poignant and all made with a fraction of the money (laughs) that I would have spent at any other point. Actually, to be honest with you, I probably need to load in some cash into this... (laughs) Uh, anthropic accountant so that I don't uh, run out of money. I'm going to check that at some point. All right, so in conclusion, we've got ourselves a itty-bitty little super powerful, absolutely dynamic large language model called Claude Three Haiku. My name is Ikello Harrod. This has been the Future Fiction Factory, and I hope that you will like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. All right, that worked out well. That was good. That will be a quick, nice little video that I don't even know if I have to do too much editing. I think I like just have a little spot where it was like a little quiet. Oh, yeah, this is going to be really good, y'all. Why am I talking with a British accent? I don't know. I've been in the British people today. Uh, today. <laughs> Come on, boy. And guess what, everybody? It's not rainy in Seattle. <laughs> it is not rainy in Seattle. I love that. <laughs> I love it when it's not rainy in Seattle. <laughs> I uh I don't mind it when it's rainy in Seattle. Uh as a matter of fact, it's a um beautiful thing, but it is it turned weird. It's like March 17th. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day to all of you Irish people and all of you people who celebrate uh, celebrate with the Irish. It is a glorious thing. I remember one time I was in Portland, Oregon, and I was, uh, it was many years ago, and I got quite drunk. <laughs> I, I remember the first half of the day. I don't remember the second half of the day. <laughs> it was, hmm, I just had a good time, and it was good, so we're not going to talk about that anymore. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, happy uh, St. Patrick's Day. I can only do that Irish accent for, for so long. I mean, and, and it, before it starts to turn into Scottish, which I don't want to do. I don't want to turn into Scottish. All right, so let's do this. Let's turn off my dictation. And I will check in with everybody to see if they enjoy that video, that quick little video. All right. Looks like we got up to like four people at one point. Look at us. We partying. Oh, look who is here. Zona Rose, take me home to a place where I belong. Where? Oh, excuse me. Arizona Desert Mama Take me home Zona Rose (laughs) Good morning, Zona Rose. (laughs) I love your name, girl. I love your... (laughs) You know I love your name. (laughs) We even made up some Miss Swift songs yesterday. Wasn't that fun? That was a lot of fun. I mean, I had myself a blast with that. <laughs> All right, let's uh, um, 
now that we've uh, broke off a little little itty bitty video up in the middle of there. <laughs> uh now oh and uh oh you know what i didn't do was i didn't check my email to see if y'all had sent if you had sent me a uh email if you wanted to uh get those links so i will check that today uh, sorry about that miss swift all right what, uh, where are we i know it was so amazing i mean that i mean it was really uh, all right so now that you've told me what progressive rock is, I have a re- I'm a really big fan of it. I'm a big fan of Rush. Um, the Hocus Pocus tour was like my my freaking lifeblood, and um, I I'm a I, I like Prince. I like stuff with guitars. I've got a guitar behind me right there. I've got another guitar sitting out in the house. I uh, used to most of the time you would see in my videos from when I first started the channel, I had a whole bunch of musical instruments around me. Now they're all spread out. But I am uh, really keying back up and into music. The Sunno thing has started to get my little juices flowing. So I'm going to hopefully be singing with. Oh, actually, see, I don't read music i mean i don't write music properly i have very very bad uh theory i am very bad at theory i understand uh theories like math i get to a certain point and then i'm starting to go what you want me to do a what (laughs) so uh these sorts of things that can help me build chords or create um progressions and stuff like that uh, in a natural and intuitive way where I don't have to actually rely on theory is starting to really make me excited. So I'm having a whole bunch of fun, a whole bunch of fun uh, playing around with that. Let me do this. There we go. There I am. All right. That's better. I'm having so much fun playing with with uh music and uh it's it's really really a lot of fun i'm having a lot of fun taking my classes over at the future fiction academy and i'm having a whole bunch of fun creating so that i can create even better stuff for you guys not even just music i um uh, i really love writing i really love uh making videos that sort of thing okay uh prog rock is all about layering and instrumentation. You might say it's like symphonic jamming. Yes, I agree. I agree. As a matter of fact, um, I think that's one of the reasons why I like Fish uh, a little bit. Uh, there was a band, a local band that I uh, in Seattle that I listened to, would go and listen to that was very Fish-like. And uh, Fish very much... Um, was one of those bands where I was like that that appealed to the complicated like part of my brain that likes that sort of uh, intricate harmony. I'll give you another example. Queen. Uh, the fact that they 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 work so hard on their harmonies and they work so hard on everything. It's just a you know I'm not, I want to devolve into being just a uh, music channel here. <laughs> Anything like that. I just, I just think that that was one of the more, oh, one of my more seminal moments was hearing uh, Bohemian Rhapsody from the beginning to the end, or uh, Meatloaf's uh, uh, "By the Dashboard Light," or um, anything from Rush, anything from Peter Gabriel. <laughs> you know those sorts of things. Those, those. Uh, uh beauty for beauty's sake sort of um musicians um and you know there's a lot of things that are really interesting going on right now in the world of music i uh had been discounting it quite a bit lately i've been down on it because uh the pop scene was so is so generic and not very cool and and what happens to the music industry if uh, they ban tiktok and all of that stuff you know um, so there are some definite consequences. Uh, Meatloaf has, uh, has that big sound too. Yes. Meatloaf does have that big sound. It's one of those, um, 
you know, it was one of those things where you were like, oh, um, rock and roll can have different flavors. It can be heavy metal. It can be laid back like uh, the stuff that uh, um, James Taylor and uh, Carol King and all of them. They would do. They had real rock musicians doing the crazy stuff. Man, I really have turned this into a music channel. Sorry about that. I could just keep going on and on. I'm a big James Taylor fan. I've seen him four times in my life, and uh, I've never seen Prince. I had an opportunity to go, but I couldn't. Uh, I could. I couldn't go, and uh, I wish I had seen Prince. My wife's seen David Bowie four times. So yeah, we're those. Tor- we're those people. I've seen Michael Jackson three times, Janet Jackson twice. Um, you know those sorts of things. I've seen Linda Ronstadt when she was doing her um, uh, mariachi tour. <laughs> where she was a her Spanish album, that sort of thing. Having her listen to K-pop, uh, J-pop anime in a while. Let's see. I've been into J-pop anime OTS. What is OTS? OTS. Um, anime OTS. Is, oh, oh uh, is that orchestrations? That's got to be orchestrations. Um, uh, the sound beds for, yeah. Original or, uh, soundtracks. Yes, yes. I'm very, soundtrack, yeah. S-O-S-T. Yes, ah, I never really thought about that. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Swift, for teaching me about yet another <laughs> thing. Live on the air, ladies and gentlemen. Ikella learns about life. <laughs> All right, um, let's get back to the news. Now that we've played around with haiku. Now, I do not know what this has, uh, what implications this has for, I don't know what implications this has for, uh, for writers, but it might. Even though I've tried to use Grok for writing, but, you know, anyway. So, Elon Musk announces XAI to open source Grok. Uh, he was getting ridiculed about the open sourcing uh, of it. And so, here are the key takeaways. This is all from the Future Tools website. Uh, shout out to Matt Wolf. Elon Musk has announced that XAI will open source Grok this week. Sure it will because it is Sunday. Has it happened yet? In recent weeks, I don't know, I don't know. In recent weeks, Elon Musk has criticized OpenAI for uh, OpenAI for its deviation from open source principles. Musk's uh, announcement to open source open a- uh, Grok's OpenAI through XAI reflects a direct challenge to OpenAI's practices. This strategic move is seen as an effort to realign with the original mission of making AI accessible to all. The lawsuit against OpenAI and Sam Altman underscores Musk's commitment to open innovation. Or he's just trying to stick it to Sam. Cause, and there it is. That's the... There it is. And then there's a nice little article written up on the Future Tools website by some AI somewhere, I'm sure. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, let me get a little sip here. Amidst a backdrop of increasing tension between Elon Musk and OpenAI, a new development emerges, signaling a bold statement from the tech mogul. Musk recently took on, uh, took to X, announcing that XAI will open source Grok this week. This decision comes after weeks of Musk vocal criticism towards OpenAI for not adhering to its foundational principle of open sourcing its technology. 
a critique punctuated by Musk's legal action against OpenAI and Sam Altman. Oops. Musk's move to make Grok publicly accessible through OpenAI is a manifest critique of OpenAI's recent practices, which, according to Musk, strays significantly from the organization's original mission. By open sourcing Grok, Musk is not merely sharing a sophisticated AI tool with the world. He is making a pronounced statement for uh, on the ethos of transparency, collaboration, and universal access to the realm of AI development. All right, um, let's get to the conclusion. As the tech community anticipates the release of Grok's open source code, the spotlight is not just on what the platform can do for or uh, but on the broader message it conveys about the future of AI development Musk's stance is clear the path is truly revolution uh, the path to truly revolutionary AI discoveries lies in openness and shared progress with Grok Musk is setting a precedent challenging the industry to follow suit and recommit to the open source ethos that once defined the AI frontier. Okay, yeah. Um, that's a little bit one sided, but uh it is true. He does he has won he has spent a lot of time championing uh open source, but he has also he he's also a man trying to uh gather as many resources as he can to can create his future his dreams he wants to make his dreams come true and in that creating the future and gathering of resources and power sometimes mr musk can um not see the forest for the trees he has a um, um, let's just say he's a singular mind all right next up uh <laughs> this is a very interesting story <laughs> uh you know what and i'm going to and these are like back to back and i won't spend that much time on this but uh mid journey <laughs> Uh, the image scraping mid journey, that means they were out there scraping everyone bans rival AI firm for scraping images. <laughs> it's pretty funny to me <laughs> on Wednesday, mid journey banned all employees from, uh, from image synthesis rival stability AI from its service independently, uh, indefinitely after it detected botnet like activity suspected to be a stability employee attempting to scrape prompt and image pairs in bulk mid journey advocate peter st pierre tweeted about the announcement which came via <laughs> mid journey's official discord uh in a that's funny that's pretty funny i mean they did a lot of scape scraping <laughs> their cells. Oh, Mid Journey, you're so duplicitous. <laughs> but in an in more lighter uh, tones, Mid Journey has introduced character reference, which is a feature for enhanced creativity. This is a huge thing. Here are the key takeaways. Mid Journey has rolled out a new character reference, CREF, that's right, C R E F, feature in its Discord server, aiming to refine the character design process in image generation. The feature allows users to specify an image URL as a character reference, adjusting how closely the generated character matches the reference's uh, face, hair, and clothes. Users can adjust the reference strength to focus on to focus more on the face and include outfit and hair details, enhancing flexibility 
in character customization. While designed primarily for characters created within Midjourney, the tool advises against using real people's photos due to potential distortion. <laughs> you know why they're doing that, right? They have the ability to take a regular photo and make a complete perfect copy of that regular photo. They absolutely do. I've seen the early, some earlier versions of it that can take your photo and pretty much make a person that's very, very close to the one that you put in. Um, I've done it a couple of times, and it's it's pretty uncanny. Um, it's, it screws up sometimes, but the later versions, it's really good. The feature also supports uh, combining multiple references, and it's compatible with both Niji and standard mid-journey models promising versatility in creative endeavors. This means that you can make create uh, you can make consistent characters. Consistent characters. I've been, I've been playing with it all week on here. Consistent characters. You can actually make consistent characters. Just saying. Uh, you can make a comic book, you can make a graphic novel, have your character appear in so many different ways. It's pretty exciting. All right, time for me to get some more water. That was exciting. You like that AD, um, a, 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 ASMR? I think that's what it is. There we go. I needed a drink. I, I probably actually need two drinks. Whoo, man. I, uh, whenever I do a live stream, I do not eat before I do the live stream. I usually eat after the live stream. <laughs> um, because I'm naturally buoyant. That's right. Okay, let's um, do a quick check-in. Oh, dear God, look at this. Um, what is all of that? Let me make this wider. There we go. I don't need all of that. There and that. Let's see here. Future fiction music fact. <laughs> Future fiction music factory. <laughs> I might just do that. I might just do that. Not a fan of Musk. <laughs> he's uh he's got his um yeah. I like his rockets. I like his cars. Um him, I'm uh, debating. He's getting a little. Um, he, I think he believes that the rules of the universe aren't real, and that he's and so he's pushing them. And uh, you have fun with that, Elon. Um, and uh, yeah, you have fun with that. I'm not gonna say anything. Uh, right on. Point. Uh, Woohoo! Consistent characters would rule. Uh, would rule. No six fingers. <laughs> Probably still six fingers. No, no. Um, let me give you. Let me see if I can show y'all some of the things I have been playing around with. Hmm. Here, where pray tell is my mid journey? I thought I had a sorry about this, y'all. Let me see if I can find mid journey. Oh, no, I don't usually sign in 
into it here. I usually sign into it on the other one. Apologies, everybody. There. What the? Oh, there we go. Okay, so... All right, um, create archive. All right, so I was working on uh, some consistent characters and uh, in mid journey. And let me see if I have them all. Okay, we'll start with her. All right, so this is Scarlet Witch and uh, four different versions, like four different styles of Scarlet Witch, but same girl. Now, this girl is actually based on a actual real picture that I took at a Comic-Con. And uh, so I have a very unique styled character based off of a real person, but not actually that real person because it does distort their face quite a bit. But look at her eyes. That's just crazy. Every picture gives you that kind of thing. And then there, I at some point, we switch to a new character. And <laughs> as you can see, she's absolutely spot on. I even have different versions of me of, of her like throwing it out and then this is another consistent character he's in a space station he's the head of a uh, crime family and we're on a space station and uh, those all look like the same guy right there that guy that guy that guy and that guy like he's got a mustache he decided to not have a mustache now he got a mustache and then this is a character that I've been thinking about being the uh, love interest for this guy. And uh, I wanted to put her into the outfit that he would first see her in at like a, um, not like a bohemian thing, but like a, uh, a big high class retreat um like party thing and it's the end of the night and uh, she's just trying to get away see sometimes it depending on the uh the reference this was a different reference for the same character so she actually looks like a completely different person than this person but very close these are all the same reference but then i went back and then these are references to the same character and these are references to the same character like this was uh supposedly i'm thinking she's a in a night not a nightgown but a actual a dress a beautiful dress and she jumped into the pool and she was getting out of the pool and you know it's the first time he sees her you know so i was experimenting with these different women and their like look as you can see i can um i mean it's these are creative and uh and uh standard upscales i mean and she looks so look look at her nose it doesn't even everything is perfect and then i kept coming across these different poses and i was like eh. and i found this one and i liked this one so I scaled it out and all these dresses, some of them were a little weirdly revealing. And <laughs> I was just like, I, uh, I wanted a, uh, um, a low cut nightgown, but some of them were crazy low cut. Like this is crazy low cut, but it's a great shot. So imagine you, he comes around a corner and she's just sitting there by herself and, uh, like right here. 
and that was another consistent character. So I'm trying to get these ideas of like, and look at this. This is what, this would be the shot where he sees her come around the corner and he comes around the corner and she goes and she's like just looking out a window and she's taking off of her, sh her shoes because my God, and she's, uh, and it's uh, a high split dress and she's just trying to get comfortable and she's looking out a window and he comes around the corner and he sees her. And that's the look that he sees when he first sees her. This was like me coming up with a narrative as I'm creating these characters. I <laughs> absolutely love consistent characters. It is a revelation. It is a revelation. I'll give you another example. Here's the uh, girl. I The girl in the bathing suit earlier. Uh, the swimsuit earlier, I actually was trying to think of her in a steampunk city, right? And in that steampunk city, she's uh, just trying to uh, make her way, make her life, you know? And so these are the references. It's the same girl in all of these different situations. The same girl. So I can use her over and over again over and over again i uh, did i do that with this character too yes so i took this character and she was already in a field and i think i prompted to have her in a field and i took this character and she's consistent look at that that is amazing absolutely amazing this character <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah. Sometimes when you extend these out, that's the worst. That right there is beautiful. Look at this character. Completely consistent from person to person to person. I'm just having my at myself an absolute blast with consistent characters. It's blowing my mind, y'all. Like, actually just great i know right i know um let's see here cars for uh, let's see cool pick looks like uh Alietta from Doc, uh, david lynch's dune 1986 <laughs> yeah but did you know yeah did, i am i mean the the character the quality of the characters and how consistent they are are it's it's like ridiculous. It's it's like ridiculous. Same character. I was uh, a different variation on the same character. I'm looking for a blonde with smoky eyes. You know, someone that could possibly be. Um, I have a idea for a story where um, uh, people. Uh, it's not me that has the idea. It's me and my uh, friend uh, have an idea for a story where uh, the Big Bang, like when, like was it uh, CERN? When CERN, when they started doing co uh, collisions, uh, they opened up a portal between worlds. And uh, when you go to the other side, you have magical powers. And then people who mix with other people from the other side, and everyone looks exactly the same. It's just a different dimension. Uh, they have the children and they, uh, the children can do magic on both sides. So it makes them like supreme magical beings. And she was one of the characters I was thinking of. But look at this zoom out of uh, my one character. So I could take her and just put her anywhere. Right now, she could be having a conversation with somebody about a really bad thing on the top of a building somewhere. And then, let me see, where are the, there we go. Some of these, I kept extending these and working this. Look at these, look at these consistent characters. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out a, you know, these are actual characters, mostly women right now. I am um, trying to figure out 
like a male I'm working on a male character um a comic book character let me see here is there anything else that I have <laughs> look at these uh, it's I'm sorry y'all this is just ridiculous it's the same girl the same girl look at all of the different settings she's in yeah look at sometimes when it extends it's so weird right just great there this is the one this is the one I love this picture this is an extension you know with other extensions is it does this and as a matter of fact I could have this and I uh, actually I could have this and I could just put uh, as a thumbnail for a video and just say consistent characters, you know, just right there, just consistent characters. Because it created an extra her here as a variation on the theme. So this was I asked I extended it out and it put her there. So it's almost as if it's a. Uh, a film, you know, where you say one thing and then you walk up to her and then she's still in that beautiful light and you're having a conversation with her about something. It's perfect. It's perfect. I believe that uh, most good narratives are built around strong women characters. The men can be the protagonists, but if they don't have some type of... Um, female presence there's this weird yin and yang that doesn't happen inside of fiction unless you have strong female characters so i've been working on that and then these are the upscales that's a creative upscale i think and that's the regular upscale as a matter of fact i'm positive that's the this is the upscale creative yeah because look at her eyes look at her eyes that looks crazy right there. And this that that does not. But then look, this is the standard upscale, which is basically this picture and this picture and with great hair and the whole nine yards. They even gave her a little tattoo right there, which is not present right there, which is fascinating to me. But what a beautiful like rendition of what you could I mean you could literally create a, a like so many characters and let me let you know I had to go through some stuff to get her feet right cuz you know you can't just be having some crazy busted feet uh at least that's what Eddie Murphy said <laughs> but uh that right there is consistent characters okay and uh, Let's see, what else do we have on the agenda for today? Let me see. Okay. Uh, all right, so Leonardo. Let me check on this. Leonardo. Let me see. Claude 3. Oh, um, Leonardo added uh, collections. There's this thing uh, inside Leonardo where they have um, where you can save things and where all of your your saved pictures are. You can now group them and select them and then put them into. Uh, I was working on turtles today. I was working on Storm, the the goddess of thunder of uh, lightning today. I was working on. Um, romantic covers with men, no shirt men today sort of, you know, thing. So you can do all of that. I don't really need to show you that. You can just go find it yourself. And it's just inside of Leonardo AI. So, um, go find that. Okay. What else? I showed you figure one. I showed you my images and I think that that's it. I do, I do, I do. Um, 
what I do need to do is just check in on everyone. Looks like everything is going hunky dory. Okay, and uh, we've been doing this for about an hour and a half, and I think I am almost done. Uh, I, there was some, uh, it looks like we might actually write here at some point. Let me see here. Okay, so, um, <laughs> just because I love it, uh, here is the these playlists that I have, right? Uh, songs that need to be worked on. And this is uh, Cafe Con Sador. Let's see. And it's instrumental. I love this song so much and uh, I would love to break it down and uh, uh, have actually, you know, live bands play this music. This is a ridiculously, ridiculously vibrant uh, Latin uh, jazz song. Now, let me get to the end. I want to show you why. If I'm not mistaken, it does pop right back in. One, two, three. And that's where I want to start uh, this generation. So what we're going to do is I'm going to continue this song. And we're going to continue it right at the two because I want to continue that whole thing and I don't oh uh oh you know what let's do this let's clear this out and we'll go to custom all right there we go <laughs> I was like wait a minute so library oh, not liked Gonna go songs I want to work on. All right, and continue this song. And continue, and it's instrumental. And it's V3 Alpha. Man, it's the Alpha version of V3, y'all. Imagine when it actually gets really, really good. Okay, um... Let's see here. We're going to type in Cafe Cafe Con Sador. Sabor? Does anybody know what that means? Cafe Con Sabor. And, uh, Vibrant Jazz Latin. Vibrant Jazz Latin. All right, I think that it is ready to go. Instrumental. And uh, we will continue from the two. And what we're going to do is we're going to click it twice so I can get four versions of that 
what was I doing? Uh, Lucy Sky yesterday. I think I did a progressive rock Lucy Sky. You got me into this, uh, uh, Miss Swift. That was you. I'm the red. Unite to make their final stand To find those who thought to keep us bound <laughs> Forging a new All right, let's not get started with that <laughs> All right, so here we go This is the end So that here we go, that beautiful little piano. Here we go. All right, that was that one. Interesting. All right, we're gonna. AI can play y'all. Oh, all right, next one. Sign up. Did it just sign me up? Oh, I bet I hit a thing. <laughs> oh my God, it was jamming. Oh gosh, bless. Mm. I'm sorry, y'all. I, mm, I was having a moment there. Mm, mm, mm. All right, so Zona likes the second one. So we've heard all four of them. I really. You're right. The second one is really good, but there is there's something straightforward about the first. All right, so listen to this. There's something super straightforward about the first one, right? Uh, the first one is just in your face. It's like, hey, we're just gonna continue the song exactly like it was. Yeah. 
All right, so here's number two. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Did anybody tell me what the what that means? Coffee with something. Coffee with something. Coffee with something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I don't know which one to pick. I re all right. So there is something really good about the third one. I like the fact that it went down. And then Oh, that that and then it puts that low kind of Oh my gosh, it's like a dream for like a piano player to be playing this. It would ooh. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god, it did it again. Ah, that was off the key. Ooh. It's so haunting because it's so chill. And what's what I love about this program it's its ability to give you so many options. <laughs> so many options. So many options. And whatever you decide you want to uh, All right, so let's go back to dreams of swiftness. Swift niece. Dreams of Swift Niece. Let's go to the other one. There we go. Sounds a little like Jesus Christ Superstar. Definite structure. And 
and see there's there's lots of stuff in there i just wish you could get rid of some, maybe the beginning of some of the songs and start i i they have to start doing that where you don't like the beginning so you would like the beginning to start differently Yeah, see, that's a hot mess. Um, yeah, see, that's a hot mess. Uh, but we could still take the same thing, copy it, and we could create even more variations. We'll go three and actually... If I do, let's do this, paste. Uh, let's take the theme of her being a writer out. And um, let's see, let's go with, uh, mm, give me something generic about your body. Let me see here. What's your hair color? Miss Swift. Ah, uh, swiftness like fitness. Uh, I, I don't know if it's going <laughs> to say, say it like that. What's your uh, hair color? Black, gray. Nice. I'm going to call you salt and pepper. How about that? More salt than pepper? <laughs> More salt than pepper. Let's see here. Okay, black and gray. Um, Sunno. All right, so where we are is almost at, we're almost at, we're 20 minutes till nine. I'm not going to. Do this forever, but I am having a fun bunch of fun. Hair. Is black. And gray. She. Is a force. To be reckoned, reckoned with, and not bad to uh, look at. Either. Either. Keeping with the uh, progressive rock 70s singing about a girl song. Uh, reckoned. And, all right. So we'll do one set. And we and we'll do one as an instrumental. There we go. So you'll have two epic ones with knees. Yes. 
now the next one. Oh, same song. Same song. Symphony of the Senses thing. It really falls back on some of these lyrics. Probably gonna pick up a little song at the end. Yeah. Oh, which means we could keep going. Now here is the instrumental of Miss Swiftness. And it's ending at three at one thirty four, and it's still got like twenty seconds left. Listen, which means it doesn't stop. Ooh. Oh my god, that is awesome! All right, here's the next one. Oh. They were totally about to go. Oh, we are definitely extending that one. Oh my God. Continue that song. Uh, style of music. Copying that. Paste. 
put the name in here. Copy. Paste. And what we're doing is we're building out from the two minute mark. Oh my God, that was epic. Um, how about she's the swiftness? <laughs> Let's do brackets, chorus. She is the swift ness. I think I spelled that right. She's the swiftness. Did I spell that right? Swift. Yes, I did. Okay. She's the swiftness, and I'm going to put in parentheses, Lady Swiftness. There. Let's see what it does with that. It may, it may not do it, but I'm going to do one with the chorus and then one as an instrumental. One with song and then one as an instrumental. Okay, so now we have four versions. I love playing with this on online with you, with all of you people. This is so much fun. <laughs> this is so much fun. Let's see here. Slay. Nice. Dang, I want to go. Uh, <laughs> I want to go. <laughs> I want to go slay a dragon or something. <laughs> oh, this is a blast, isn't it? Okay, so now you ready? Okay, so this is the ending. Here's the ending. Now, here we go. This is part two. Actually, did we listen to the second lady swiftness? We'll deal with that later. Okay. Okay. I should have let her get to the chorus on the other one. That Lady Swiftness thing was for real. Oh. <laughs> These are just the instrumentals.
Wow, the instrumental ones are better than the ones that aren't instrumental. <laughs> Just in case you're just joining us right now, we are playing around with Sunno as usual. We like to play around with Sunno at the end of the uh, hour because we are almost at our two-hour mark, and we are just going to play around a little while longer. I like this one a lot. echoes that like weird thing in the beginning all right so let me listen okay we're gonna go back to the ri no we're gonna listen to that s hmm Let's listen to the original one with the actual. an example of just inserting a little bit of song in there. Oh, this has a cool ending. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. I like Lady Swiftness. I'm really going to work on this. I don't know whether it's going to be a completely instrumental or whether I'm going to have the middle part with the singing. She is the swiftness, Lady Swiftness, Lady Swiftness. So, oh, Lady Swift, oh, she's the swiftness. Boom. Lady Swiftness, Lady Swiftness. All right, so here it is. Come on. What? What? Yeah, yeah. Come on. I want you to be swift. got some work to do on this song all right well thank you for causing me to have to deal with that miss swift <laughs> but it's called lady swiftness uh lady swiftness all right ladies and gentlemen we are very close <laughs> it does have that it does have a uh, uh a bit of an epic feel to it I don't know whether I'm going to inject those. She is the swiftness, Lady Swiftness. Or, I mean, it does feel like it should have a little bit of Lady that that in there. Or why are we even calling it Lady Swiftness? You know what I'm saying? 
Um, really a lot of fun today, everybody. Uh, we did not do that much live writing. We did do that yesterday. There was a lot of live writing yesterday, unless you want to count us playing around with Claude 3 uh, haiku, which I actually count as writing. <laughs> it's a great little story, and maybe I'll actually do something with that story. Anyway, I'm going to go see the League of Magical Negroes today. And... Um, and walk my wife and dog at a park at some point because Seattle has the most beautiful weather you have seen in a long time, and it's not even summertime. It's not even summertime. It's early spring. It's the middle of March. It is St. Patrick's Day. Everybody that is going to be drinking today, do it responsibly because we want you around for my live stream next week. All right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This has been a lot of fun. You know, when I'm looking at the my statistics for all of my uh, stuff going on on uh, OBS, I always wish that it had the amount of time that I was actually on here. It, it doesn't. Uh, it does not have the amount of, yeah, and it says that I haven't dropped any frames or any of that stuff. That's cool, but still, dag nabbit. Anyway, um, do me a favor before you like get off of this stream. Would you do me a favor and uh, like this video, please? Like the video, like subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I think everybody in here has. <laughs> we got like three people left. And uh, I think that that's it for the day. I hope that you have all enjoyed this kind of fun little like romp through all of the news of the week. And uh, I will try and have on a newscaster outfit next week and next Sunday. Next Saturday, we're probably going to try and do a live stream after I get done with my class with the Future Fiction Academy. Uh, I'll have a, like a whole live stream thing set up so that I can just jump off of there and jump on to my own live stream. All right, everyone, I will see you all so soon. Oh, let me see. Uh, is that a film? Never heard of it. Now I'm going to look it up. Strike the strike the like button with the drumsticks. <laughs> Uh, what's this, Miss Swift? Uh, what movie are you talking about? What, I, what was I saying? Uh, that you, I, I make reference to references to movies all the time, and I can't remember what which movie you were uh, you're referring to. Uh, no, no, no. Uh. League of Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know me. I go to a lot of. <laughs> I forgot I even said that just now. Uh, League of Magical uh, Negroes is, um, I think David Allen Greer is in it. And uh, I think the premise is that this guy gets uh, pulled into a uh, magical group of black people who, uh, it might be Magical Negroes, Magical Black People. I can't remember what the name of the movie is. My wife booked the tickets. Uh, but uh, their uh, job is to make white people's lives uh, easier. That is their whole job. It's going to be funny. So much fun. So much fun. Um, but yeah, I uh, I have an AMC uh, thing. And so we go to the movies at least once a weekend. Probably some movies. Sometimes we go to a movie three times. Uh, movies every day of the weekend. So anyway, my name is Ikel O'Hara. This has been the Future Fiction Factory. And I hope that all of you have a great St. Patrick's Day, and I will see all of you in the next video. See you soon. See you soon. We are going to go out with uh, Lady Swiftness uh, rocking it hard. Bye, everybody.